uh, if I could just ask kindly all the participants to make sure they're on mute. And uh, Ravavi, whenever you're ready, we're good to go. Sisters and friends, please let me sing. Please let me say peace to you. Da 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 this is the house, the house of the Lord. We wish the best for you. Lehimaan bet Hashem Melokeinu Avashato Thank you to all of you from Buenos Aires to New York and beyond for joining us for this Memorial Laskara. On July 18th, 1994, a ferocious car bombing of the headquarters of Amia, the largest Jewish community center and social service agency in Buenos Aires, killed, murdered 85 people and wounded 300 more. It was the largest attack against the Jewish community in the diaspora since the Shoah. Two years earlier, on March 17, 1992, terrorists also bombed the Israeli embassy in Buenos Aires, resulting in 29 dead and many more injured. And so, this morning, a day after July 18th, the painful 26th anniversary of Amia, we remember, because of COVID, we remember virtually, from Argentina to New York and beyond, in the spirit of Zachor, Lo Tishkach, remember, thou shalt not forget. I do not speak Spanish, but virtually everyone else will be speaking in English and Spanish so that those in America, those in Argentina can understand. Our Ascara will begin with Rabbi Claudia Kreiman, who will offer a spiritual framework for our memorial. Rabbi Kreiman is the senior rabbi of Temple Beth Zion in Brookline, Massachusetts, a large conservative synagogue. Rabbi Kreiman's Ima, Susie, was amongst the victims. And she will be followed by Gustavo Avabuch, who will offer reflections about his beautiful sister Yanina, who was killed in Amia. And we all welcome Jonathan, Gustavo, and Yanina's brother, who was also looking on. It was almost bar mitzvah when he found out 
that Janina was gone. After Gustavo Yididi, or Rav Abraham Ben Shimu, regional director of Chabad North in Buenos Aires, who offer words of it root, inspirational words. And then a short nigun and yididi, yididenu, Miki, Reb Yoshua, Chazak, Vermatz, director of the Jewish radio station, Radio Chai, who has been active from the beginning in demanding that justice be done, will then say a few words. Miki was a close friend of Susie's. And then some final words, concluding with the Kale Mole Memorial Prayer. Rabbi Kramen, Claudia. Thank you, Rabbi Avi. And I want to begin by saying I'm here with my daughter Alma and my spouse, Rabbi Evan Leader, and my other daughter, little one, Ariel. But I want to just start saying how grateful I am with, uh, for Rabbi Avi Weiss, as he has been with us um, since the beginning. Uh, I was reminding, uh, telling him before how 26 years ago, uh, when we were going through the hardest week of our lives, um, Rabbi Avi was in Buenos Aires with us. I'm going to share a little bit of my story. I'll do it in English and some of the things I will translate to Spanish. I woke up on July 18, 1994, a little bit later than usual. The phone rang. It was my friend Marisa, who lived in Pasteur Street, just a couple of blocks from the AMIA building the center of the Jewish community in Buenos Aires. And Marisa cried, Claudia, volaron la AMIA, Claudia, volaron la AMIA. They blew up the AMIA, they bombed the AMIA. I can still hear the, her voice. I seguir escuchando su voz 26 years later. I remember standing, gripping the phone, not sure what it meant. A suicide bomber had drive, driven a van laden with explosives into the AMIA building, the Jewish Community Center in Buenos Aires. 85 people were killed and hundreds injured. My mother was murdered 26 years ago in that terrorist attack, and I was 19 years old. We couldn't get a hold of my mother. We called her work. We called everywhere. Our phone kept ringing, friends and family, including Miki, who is here, were calling with the hope that perhaps by any chance my mother hadn't gone to work that day. But she had gone, like every day, early in the morning, taking the bus to the AMIA and to do her work. A friend, Mariana, came to pick us up and we drove to the AMIA in a taxi. The city was jammed and you could only hear sirens. We got as close as we could, looking for my dad, for friends, for something. We were hoping all this was a mistake. We spent that first day trying to figure out where my mom could be. Maybe she was at a local hospital. Eventually, they brought all of the families whose loved ones were missing to a nearby building on Ayacucho Street. We waited for a week. I recall that week with a deep pain and anguish. They would come with lists of people who were injured <coughs> and in hospitals. And we would wait to hear our mom's name announced. It was never. Esperamos una semana recibir las noticias de mi mamá. Recuerdo esa semana con mucho dolor, con mucha angustia. Venían cada vez con listas de personas que estaban en hospitales Y nosotros esperábamos que dijeran el nombre de nuestra mamá. Y nunca lo anunciaron. Then people came to ask about our mom's health and dental records, so they couldn't identify her body in the rubble. That was the most painful week of my life. But I was also, I was also embraced by loved ones, by community, by friends. Esa fue la semana más difícil, más dura, más dolorosa de mi vida. Pero también recuerdo el amor de la comunidad, de los amigos. The Shabbat immediately after the bombing was Shabbat Nachamu, the Shabbat of Consolation. I was also, it was also the eighth anniversary of my Bat Mitzvah. 
I read Torah, the Shul, at Betel, as I had planned. I read the Ten Commandments, including the commandment to love your mother and your father. I recall stopping at that moment as my head fell into the Torah scroll in painful wailing. I knew my mom was dead. The next Sunday, six days after the bombing, I woke up and I decided that I needed to do something. I couldn't sit still anymore. I couldn't just wait. I asked if I could volunteer. They were not letting family members volunteer in the rabble. I asked if there was anything I could do. I decided to visit my mom's co-worker, Javier, who survived in the hospital. My friend Claudio and I went to visit him. Javier looked at us and asked me to forgive him for surviving and for my mom not surviving. El domingo, después de seis días, decidí que quería voluntarizarme y fui a, a visitar a, un, a alguien que trabajaba con mi mamá, Javier, que sobrevivió. Cuando lo visité, Javier me miró a los ojos y me dijo, perdóname por sobrevivir y que tu mamá no haya sobrevivido. That evening, that evening the fine, the, they finally found and identified my mother's body, and we finally went home. We buried my mom seven days after the bombing. There were a lot of people. There was a lot of crying during the funeral. But there's one image I recall vividly. My Baba, Sofia Bolinsky, who lost her whole family in the Shoah, who escaped Poland before the war, was laying on my mom's coffin, crying, wailing, screaming, God, don't take my child, in Yiddish and Spanish. My mom, mommy, mama, Julia, Susana, Bolinsky de Kreiman, Susie, Shoshanita, worked in the social services of the AMIA. She helped people find jobs so they could lift themselves out of poverty and have a dignified life. That is what she did every day. Her dedication was invaluable. She cared about her clients profoundly and was always in distress because she couldn't do more for them. My dad, Rabbi Angel Kreiman, who died six years ago, used to tell me that on the morning of July 18, just a few minutes before the bomb exploded, he had called my mom at work. He wanted to make plans for that evening. My mom said, not now. I can't talk. I have long lines of clients who need help. My mom was a dedicated wife and mother, teacher, friend, and social worker. She founded the preschool, which then became the Jewish Day School in Betel community in Buenos Aires under the leadership of her teacher, Rabbi Marshall T. Meyer. I had less than 20 years of life with my mom. And there is not one day I don't think what would she say or do or what she would advise me as I move through all my own life. After the end of the Shiva, the seven days of mourning, where we did not leave our house, as many of you might know, there is a custom to go out and walk around the block as a symbol of reintegrating to life. After mourning my mother, we had a wedding of dear friends, students of my parents. We went to the chupa, to the ceremony, and then we stayed just for a few minutes at the beginning of the party where they dedicated to my mom and the victims of the AMIA and refrained from the music. I vividly remember the feeling in my body that pushed me forward. A feeling that told me I had to go to the wedding and I had to return to my life and my teaching. I had to reconnect with purposeful work and with the joy of love. I was going to move forward and then live a life of meaning, like my mother. Cuando terminó la, la Shiva, estábamos invitados a un casamiento. Decidimos ir a la Jupa. Y recuerdo hasta el día de hoy el, la, la sensación en mi cuerpo de que tenía que ir a este casamiento, que tenía que volver a la vida, que tenía que conectarme con mi trabajo, con trabajo, con propósito, con, el, con la alegría del amor, con conectarme con la vida como lo hizo mi mamá. The first year after the AMIA bombing, when I was still living in Buenos Aires, I joined the weekly demonstration in front of the Argentinian Supreme Court to ask for justice. We would stand every Monday at 9.53 a.m. 
the day and time of the blast and cry out the words from Leviticus, justice, justice, you shall pursue. Sedek, Sedek, Tirdov. I recall asking myself on one of those Mondays if I could continue standing there, asking for justice for the rest of my life. I decided to leave Argentina and to move to Israel. I became an educator and later a rabbi, bringing the values that my parents taught me to life. 26 years later, no one has been held responsible for the AMIA attack and justice has not been served. And today, like every year and every day, I continue to cry for justice. And I do so not just for this tragedy, but I fight for justice for this broken world. I refuse to stand by, I refuse to stand by and accept a world of numbness, death, violence, and killing. We're living in dark, dark and unprecedented times. The pandemic and the many social inequalities that it has unveiled call us to act. We must choose to fight to protect the most vulnerable in our society. We must choose to fight for racial justice. And although hatred, racism, bigotry continue to dehumanize people, we must choose to work toward a better world. We have no other choice. I continue to stand today to demand justice <coughs> because I cannot give up on the possibility of living in a world free from violence and fear. I demand for justice because of the lack, the lack of justice damages all of us. To honor my mother's memory this July 18 and every day forward, I will continue living, continue loving, continue working toward a world in which all can stand with pride and dignity. Tzedek, Tzedek, Tirdov. Justice, justice, you shall pursue. I'm going to now name as it is customary the names of the 85 victims. I'm really like. Of the 85 victims. And um, the custom is to say the word presente. They are present, they are with us every time we say the name because of Zoom doesn't work very well with all voices together. I invite you to say presente wherever you are. And if you feel like putting your hand in your heart or any way to show that they are presente with you, with us, please do so. My family will join me in saying the words presente. Silvia. Just a second, I need to figure out this one, right? No, just press it. Enter? No, this. Okay. No, it doesn't do it. Sorry. We need to figure out one thing. Sorry. Silvia Algea oh, de Rodri. Oh, sorry. Press, press that when you want to. Okay. Need to learn a little bit there. Yes. Okay. Silvana Algea de Rodriguez. Presente. Jorge Antunes. Presente. Presente. Moisés Gabriel Arasi. Presente. Presente. Carlo Avedaño Bobadilla. Presente. Presente. Janina Averbuch. Presente. Presente. Naum Band. Presente. Presente. Sebastián, Sebastián Barreiros. Presente. David Barriga. Presente. Hugo Norberta Bastiglio. Presente. Rebeca Violeta Bejar de Judín. Presente. Dora Belgorowski. Presente. Fabio Enrique Bermúdez. Presente. Romina Ambar Luján Boland. Presente. Emiliano Gastón Brickman. Presente. Gabriel Butini. Presente. Viviana Adela Casabé. 
Placenta. Paola Sara Chichevsky. Placenta. Jacobo, Jacobo Cacho Chamanuel. Placenta. Cristian Adrián Dectiar. Placenta. Diego de Pirro. Placenta. Ramón Norberto Díaz. Placenta. Norberto Ariel Dubin. Placenta. Fywell Dijament. Placenta. Mónica Feldman de Goldfeder. Placenta. Alberto Fernández. Placenta. Martín Figueroa. Placenta. Ingrid Filkenstein. Placenta. Leonor Gutmann de Finkelstein. Placenta. Fabián Marcelo Furman. Placenta. Guillermo Benigno Galarraga. Placenta. Erwin García Tenorio. Placenta. José Enrique Ginsburg, Cookie. Placenta. Cynthia Verónica Goldenberg. Placenta. Andrea Judith Guterman. Presente. Silvia Leonor Gersalis. Presente. Carlos Gilú. Presente. Emilia Jakubiak de Lepchuk. Presente. María Luisa Jaworski. Presente. Augusto Daniel Jesús. Presente. Analia Verónica Hodge. Presente. Carla Andrea Hodge. Presente. Elena Sofía Castica. Presente. Esther Klim. Presente. León Gregorio Knorpel. Presente. Berta Kosuk de Los. Presente. Luis Fernando Kupchik. Presente. Agustín Diego Lu. Presente. María Lourdes Jesús. Presente. Andrés Gustavo Malamud. Presente. Gregorio Melman. Presente. Ileana Merkovich. Presente. Naon Bernardo Mirochnik Bubi. Presente. Mónica Nudel. Presente. Elías Alberto Palti. Presente. Germán Parsons. Presente. Rosa Perelmuter. Presente. Fernando Roberto Pérez. Presente. Abraham Jaime Plaxin. Presente. Silvia Inés Portnoy. Presente. Olegario Ramírez. Presente. Noemí Graciela Reisfeld. Presente. Félix Roberto Roisman. Presente. Marisa Raquel Said. Presente. Ricardo Said. Presente. Rimar Salazar Mendoza. Presente. Fabián Chalit. Presente. Pablo Chalit. Presente. Mauricio Schiever. Presente. Néstor Américo Serena. Presente. Mirta Strier. Presente. Liliana Edith Swimmer. Presente. Naum Javier Tenenbaum. Presente. Juan Carlos Terranova. Presente. Emilia Graciela Berelegis de Toer. Presente. Mariela Toer. Presente. Marta Treitman. Presente. Ángel Claudio Upfal. Presente. Eugenio Vela Ramos. Presente. Juan Vela Ramos. Presente. Gustavo Daniel Velázquez. Presente. Isabel Victoria Núñez de Velázquez. Presente. Danilo Villaverde. Presente. Julia Susana Bolinsky de Creyman. Susi. Presente. Rita Guerona. Presente. Ademar Zarate Loyosa. Thank you for being here. Thank you all. And I invite now Janina Aberbuch's brother to share words with us. 
Thank you. Good morning. I'm Gustavo, Janina Averbuch's brother. Janina was only 20 years old when she died in Amia. She was the only daughter and granddaughter in our family. Also, she was the older sister and obviously the queen of the house. Janina was a great sister and a beautiful human being. She had been working in AMIA in the social assistance area for two years after she graduated from high school. Meanwhile, she was preparing for the university admission to study English degree. We miss her every day and her memories life in me. Thank you all for keeping up the demand of justice alive. Thank you, Abby Ways, for being present those tragic days and all these years with my family. We will never forget your love to us. Let me say a few words in Spanish. Es muy difícil continuar el relato de Claudia. Me hizo recordar exactamente todos esos días de angustia y de espera. Uno era simplemente un adolescente transitando unas vacaciones. Y como dijo Claudia, uno se levanta a los gritos un 18 cuando tu madre te grita que puse una bomba en la AMIA. Nadie está preparado para esto, menos los padres para perder un hijo y obviamente ninguno de nosotros para perder una hermana. Y ahora que mis hijos o mis sobrinos no conozcan una tía. A toda la comunidad judía en los Estados Unidos, mi agradecimiento por este apoyo constante a lo largo de estos años. Esto ha sido una tragedia que ha impactado a toda la comunidad de América. Y siempre hemos sentido la presencia de todos en el reclamo de justicia. Thank you all. Please let me introduce Rabba Ben Shimol. Bueno, queridos amigos, ante todo, mi vínculo con Rabino Abi Weiss era cuando hace 26 años pasó este terrible atentado en Amia. Yo lo acompañé a distintos hogares y a distintos lugares, fuimos juntos para ver y visitar y tratar de dar algún aliento a las familias. Y de ahí quedó un vínculo muy grande y él siempre que viene a la Argentina nos viene a visitar. Me pidió para esta ocasión que diga algunas palabras de inspiración espiritual para tratar de encontrar algún aliciente. Sinceramente no hay palabras. Es difícil hablar y encontrar alguna respuesta cuando no hay. No voy a tratar de explicar lo inexplicable, pero voy a tratar de mencionar algunas palabras que la Torá nos enseña para por lo menos saber que existe alguna inspiración o algo en el más allá que nos conecta y nada es gratis. Y algún motivo celestial para algún objetivo divino que de alguna manera en el futuro nos va a beneficiar a todos, existe. Pero voy a empezar con una historia que ocurrió en la época de la Shoah. Cuando concluyó la Shoah, el Joint dio ayuda económica para que la gente se pueda sostener. Había un señor muy mayor que decidió que quiere 
viajar a Eretz Israel, a hacer aliá. La hija, que estaba en Francia, lo ayudó para que, lo, para que pueda lograr su cometido. Él tomó un tren que tardaba varios días hasta llegar a Francia, hasta un puerto seguro para poder embarcarse y de ahí llegar a la Israel deseada. La hija se preocupó en buscar algún viajero que la ayude. Así encontró un hombre joven, y eudí obviamente, y le preguntó si lo podría acompañar a su padre. Este hombre, este joven, se ofreció con el mayor gusto, obviamente. Suben al tren y este señor mayor lleva a su valija. En ella había ropa y un tefilín. Cierra la valija y la coloca arriba del asiento. Y el joven a la mañana saca sus tefilín y se los coloca. Estaba seguro que este señor mayor también iba a querer hacer lo mismo. Espera y ve que no se los coloca. Se pre le pregunta si quiere que lo ayude a bajar la valija para colocarse los tefilín. Y le responde, yo tefilín, después de esto que ayer me hizo en la Shoah, se terminó con esta práctica. Déjame tranquilo, no quiero tener más nada que ver con Dios. Basta. Este joven se asustó y no insistió más. Al día siguiente, se sugiere de una manera muy sutil, pero este hombre se ofusca nuevamente. El tercer día, el joven se los coloca y ya no le insiste a este hombre mayor porque ya tenía la respuesta. Por la tarde, un rato antes de la puesta del sol, se acerca a la valija, saca los tefilín, este hombre mayor, estamos hablando, y se los coloca. Y luego de colocárselos, empieza a llorar desconsoladamente. Después que se los saca, el joven muy delicadamente le pregunta, ¿qué pasó? Hace dos días me dijiste que no tenés más nada que ver con ello, y ahora te los colocas. Mira, le dijo, pensé así, yo perdí en mi familia a diez personas, padres, hermanos, esposa, hijos, y este dolor me mata. Empecé a pensar, el creador del mundo perdió seis millones de hijos. Y pensando, ¿cómo le puedo dar un poquito de consuelo? Algo de alegría. Decidí que me voy a poner los tefilinos. Y de esta manera lo voy a alegrar a Dios. Pero una cosa te digo, yo no me los coloco por mí. Yo terminé con esto. Lo hago solo para darle un poquito de satisfacción a Shem, el creador del mundo. Lo hago por él, no por mí. Así es, nos explican nuestros sabios, que el, concepto, que el concepto del mal y el bien es que no hay bien absoluto ni mal absoluto. Desde que Adán come del fruto prohibido, se crea la mezcla del bien y el mal. Y mientras no venga el Mashiach, que sería el mundo de la reparación, el bien tiene algo del mal y el mal tiene algo del bien. Este año se cumplen 26 años del atentado de la AMIA. Este número, algo nos dice. El número 26 es el mismo valor numérico del nombre de Hashem. La letra Yud, la letra Hei, la letra Babi, la letra Hei final, suman 26. Es muy significativo esto. O sea, de alguna manera, Hashem está con nosotros y sufre nuestro dolor. Recuerdo cuando fue el atentado que íbamos de lugar en lugar a visitar a los familiares. Es muy fuerte, realmente, esta, esta memoria hasta el día de hoy es impensable, pero bueno, yo no tengo palabras para consolar a nadie, ni, soy, ni, soy, ni me considero apto para esto. Pero les voy a contar una pequeña historia final, y con esto termino. Mi hermano Yossi, que es rabino en una comunidad sefradí de Miami, hace un par de meses perdió a su hijo en un accidente. Consultó con un gran cabalista y le dijo, 
este cabalista. Dios ar, ar, armó su propio ejército de personas valerosas de acá de la tierra para que ayuden a quitar el mal de la tierra y así lograr que muy pronto venga el Masías. Y justamente con esta enfermedad de la corona que estamos padeciendo en esta pandemia mundial, se refirió propiamente a ello. Se fue de este mundo gente muy buena y uno no entiende por qué. Y esta fue la respuesta de este cabalista. Muy pronto va a venir Masías y se va a cumplir el pasú que dice en la Torá, en la, perdón, en la palabra de los profetas. Se levantarán y cantarán los que descansan hoy en la tierra y ellos, los caídos en este tremendo, en este tremendo atentado de Amia, también se levantarán con ellos. Y así habrá paz, habrá justicia en la tierra muy pronto en nuestros días. Amén. Thank you very much, Reb Abraham. Ani ozoche kishe amadnu kama yamima chareya pizatsa. The hayinu bahafkana. The hayushama yoteme mea elef ish. I remember standing with Reb Avram ben Shimon just a few days after Amiya. And over a hundred thousand Argentinians were present. We started to sing. Let our hearts pull out, pour out like water. And suddenly the heavens opened up and it began to rain as if God was crying as well. Shivri ka maim ka maim libeh Nochach p'nei Hashem Shivri ka maim ka maim libeh no, 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 now I'd like to ask if my dear, dear friend, Mickey Rabbi Yoshua, could say a few words to all those who are listening. Mickey plays such a central role in Buenos Aires as the director of Radio Chai reaches many tens and hundreds of thousands of, of people. Miki is a voice of moral conscience, of Jewish conscience, and is a dear, dear friend of Am Yisrael and Kol Yoshevei Tevel, raising a voice, reminding the world and reminding the Argentinian government, you may, not, you may want to forget, but we will not allow you to forget. Oh my gosh, I, I don't know if I can say something relevant after I listen to uh, Claudius and Gustavo words and of course the inspiration words of uh, Rabbi Ben Shimol. And uh, first of all, I want to thank you very much, really, Rabbi Abi Ways because you are really an inspiration for us. Uh, we need to remember to all of you that you don't know the story, and I apologize about my Spanglish. I, I, I hope that you can understand something about what I say in that poor and limited English, but uh, you know that uh, Rabbi Weiss is really an exceptional human being and rabbi 
he when he he listened about the attack to the AMIA, to the building of the community center, he just decided to take a plane and to arrive to Buenos Aires without language, without no from everyone here. He arrived and he put himself in a, in the center of the the, the the situation to to bring his love to to all the people and he continued to do that in uh, 26 years and it's really this his comment commitment is for us uh, an obligation to 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 say thanks and and to to, 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 to look him like a really how we can be sensitive to everyone. I remember the last year, in 25 years, he came back to here and uh, he goes directly to the Macri administration, to President Macri with a letter to say him that uh, he need to complain his awards and cut relations with uh, Iran and uh, and I remember absolutely how deep it was for me to go with him outside of the pink house here, the, the building of the government and to dance together to feel that all the Jewish people are absolutely together in this uh, vein and it's uh, amazing, amazing, amazing people Rabbi, amazing human being, and uh, his activism for human rights is for us really uh, a paradigm that we need to 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 thank and to and to really recognize every day. I only want to to say that you, after Claudia and, and and Gustavo, it's impossible to say something important. Um, I think in these days. 26 years over is a lot, a lot of time, and the, the world is continued to be open because we we don't have nothing really after 26 years of justice. Where we we have the truth. The truth is, you know, for the first day, that was Hezbollah with the support of Iran. They they made this uh, attack and the attack for the, to the Israel embassy. But uh, here we'll really have uh, pain because the corruption and, and what was from the beginning at today, uh, it's taking that the, the, it's, it's open forever. And in these days, I only think about two words, in every words and, and concepts. What was Goral and the second was Mazal. You know that Goral is the, we can translate in Spanish as a, a, el, el destino. I don't know in English it's destiny, something like that. Uh, and uh, of course the people that they did, in, they did in, the, in the attack, they don't look for that. That was their Goral. And uh, they still live. Because after 26 years and every day, not only we remember that, that they are in our uh, story, they are part of us. We remember the names every, every year and every day. And that was their Goral and their message to be light for us, for us to, to all the time. And in other people, we have the mazal, the mazal to be the person in the moment, in the, in the place. And uh, I remember for the beginning, of course, the shock. And uh, when I meet uh, uh, Claudia's father and the family of Claudia for many, many more to, to, to be close with them uh, and to try to do what we can. Now I change a little for Spanish because for me, of course, it's more simple. Solo agradecer al Rabino Weiss porque es un enorme ejemplo de lo que debe ser un, eh, un ser humano y un judío 
que se tomó un avión sin saber a dónde iba, sin conocer el idioma, sin tener contactos con nadie, solo porque sentía que debía estar ahí para apoyar y acompañar a aquellos que estaban sufriendo. No importa si eran judíos o no judíos, eran seres humanos que habían sido atacados. Y agradecer a que continuemos haciendo este ejercicio de memoria, sabiendo que aquellos que perdieron la vida permanecen vivos para siempre. Es, ese fue su destino y, y que nosotros tenemos el compromiso de seguir haciendo nuestra parte, en recordar y en tratar de, de poner un poco de luz eh, en medio de tanta tiniebla en este mundo. Also, again, I want to thank very much for the possibility to share uh, thoughts and feelings and uh, to give all my love to everyone that's continued to, to remember <coughs> that uh, terrible time and that terrible attacks. And our commitment is to continue to um, try to say the emet. And you remember that emet in Hebrew, the true, it's the complete. It's Aleph Mem Tav. It's the complete of that it's got in 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 world. And we hope really we hope really that uh, emet is uh, coming, and we can live in the world of emet and not in the world of uh, Shaker, of not emet. Thank you, Rabbi Abi, and 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 it was really very uh, pain and and and. Uh, and an important moment to us to share with you these remembers and thank you for all that you are doing. Thank you very, very much, Rabbi Yoshua. Thank you, Gustavo. Thank you, Claudia. Thank you, Rabbi Avram Ben Shimo. A few final words and Akel Male, and thank you to everyone for joining us. Images, I remember images of Gustavo of Jonathan, of their parents, Dr. Mario, Ababuch, hugging so tightly when they were notified that Yanina was gone. Images, images of Damian, my dear, dear, dear friend Damian, calling out in grief, I could still hear his soul crying out when he was told that his sister Cynthia Veronica was gone. Images of Rosa in a hospital. She seemed fine. And the doctors explained that she was in shock. She was walking with her little boy, Sebastian the youngest victim, five years old, and a fragment from the blast penetrated Sebastian, blessed memory's skull, and he lost his life. If I can ask, Nikki, if you could just translate what I've said briefly into Spanish, and then I'll continue. I will try, but of course, Claudia will, will do that better. Uh, he, Rabbi, el, el Rabino Weiss dice que, que recuerda especialmente las imágenes de, de esos días que no se podrá olvidar nunca cuando, cuando, bueno, cuando se enteraban de la aparición de, de Janina y, y lo que eso significaba para, para la familia. Eh, las imágenes cuando estaba con Jonathan y lo que... Eh, también le, le significó acompañar a cada uno y uno y, y lo que eso era en, en el sentimiento de, de las familias. Today, today, a woman whose last name is Kirshna is the vice president of Argentina. She is the same person who when she was president a few years earlier, signed a memorandum of understanding with Iran 
to co-investigate the bombing. This is an absolute outrage. It is similar to asking Al-Qaeda to investigate the pilots who flew those planes into the Twin Towers. Yes, this is the same person under whose watch the heroic special prosecutor Alberto Nisman was murdered just the day before he was to bring formal charges against Kirshner and others for covering up. Nisman today is Amiya's 86th victim. And so, with Christina Kirshner high, high up in power, chances of the case moving forward are slim. That is why, Dafka now, we have a sacred responsibility to remember, to remind the world never to forget, to demand from Argentina that justice must be done. With high up Iranian officials already identified as the murderers, a good start would be for Argentina to try these terrorists in absentia and to break diplomatic relations with Iran. With these Iranians already identified, a good start would be to try them in absentia so the world can see and justice be done and for Argentina to break relations with Iran as it broke relations last year under the Macri government with Hezbollah. Rep. Yoshua Miguel, just a brief summary. Yeah. And then I'll conclude. El Rabino Weiss dice que hace, que, que en este momento en la Argentina la vicepresidenta del país es nuevamente quien fuera presidenta, Cristina Kirchner, que firmó un memorándum de entendimiento con Irán para intentar encubrir a los responsables del atentado y que es absolutamente por esto más necesario aún en estos tiempos volver a reclamar que la Argentina dé los pasos que corresponden porque Cristina Kirchner ha vuelto al poder y eso nos hace... Uh, tener más temor aún de que la justicia se esté de alguna manera alejando, que tal vez el camino debería ser un juicio en ausencia que permita que los uh, responsables que han sido sindicados por la justicia argentina, los iraníes que están prófugos, sean condenados en ausencia y que esto signifique para el mundo claridad respecto de lo que ha acontecido, que debemos poner más que nunca el énfasis en eh, tratar de que la Argentina tenga una postura coherente, que avance en este juicio en ausencia, que pueda incluso, así como rompió o como definió a Hezbollah como un grupo terrorista, romper si es requerible las relaciones diplomáticas con Irán y que quede absolutamente claro la responsabilidad de ese país en relación al atentado y por eso enfatiza más que nunca en estos momentos la importancia de poner toda la presión sobre el gobierno argentino respecto del de avance en el juicio en ausencia contra los iraníes que han sido uh, sindicados como responsables del atentado. I am undeserving of the words shared by some. I want everyone in Argentina, Gustavo, Jonathan, and Damian, Reb Avraham, Reb Yoshua, Claudia here, to know how we here feel connected to you. You heroically have continued on. 
walking through the streets of Buenos Aires last year on the 25th anniversary, I heard in my ears the words of God to Cain. Kol demei achicha tzawakim elai min ha'adama. The voice of my brother's blood, the voice of my sister's blood, are crying out from the ground. Why bloods demay in the plural, the rabbis ask. Why kol demay and not kol dam? Why literally is it the bloods cry out, not just the blood? The Yamiya attack offers a possible answer. The victim's blood was shed once on July 18th, 1994. But every day, no arrests are made. They are shed again and again. And the bloods will continue crying out until justice is done. If a terrorist is not apprehended, it sends mes a message to other terrorists throughout the world that they could attack with impunity. Every day that justice is done, the bloods of the victims <clears throat> are shed again. The dead, unfortunately, will not come back to life, but a moral reckoning and an historical cleansing will give the dead and their still grieving survivors a measure of peace. Vicky, a few Spanish words and then the Kel Mole. The memorial. Well, boys, uh, dicho uh, unas palabras muy profundas respecto de por qué el último año, entre otras cosas, cuando él vino, volvió a escuchar las palabras y los gritos y que todos deben saber, Damián, Gustavo, Claudia, todos, que somos uh, y estamos juntos y que uh, somos una integridad. Y él decía que el versículo dice, de meia jija tzoakim alay minadama, las sangres de mi hermano gritan y claman a mí, desde la tierra, desde la profundidad de la tierra. Y decía que eh, podemos, con el atentado del 18 de julio, entender mucho más por qué justamente dice de meia jija, las sangres en plural y no sangre en singular. Y decía el rabino Weiss que justamente mientras hay impunidad sigue fluyendo la sangre, sigue esa sangre clamando desde la tierra porque la impunidad sigue presente. Que por eso seguramente nuestros sabios hablan de plural sangre, porque la impunidad sigue estando presente. Porque mientras los terroristas no sean condenados, no sean atacados, sigue existiendo justamente esa sangre que sigue fluyendo y que ellos pueden eh, continuar como fue luego, por ejemplo, en las Torres Gemelas y en tantos otros lugares donde ellos han atacado. Por eso la necesidad de que se haga justicia. Decía el Rabino Weiss, eh, los muertos no volverán, los muertos han sido víctimas de este terror de, de lo que pasó, pero nosotros tenemos que pedir justamente por la moral y por la convicción de que debemos hacer nuestra parte para poder llevar a la justicia a los atacantes y de esta manera poder hacer que puedan vivir en paz y nosotros todos podamos vivir en paz. In the words of Eov, of Job, whose words speak to Amia, speak to the Israeli embassy, speak to the victims crying out for justice. Eretz, al tichasi dami, 
ואל יהי מקום לזעקתי. Earth, the world, do not cover my blood. Let there be no resting place for my outcry for justice. Eretz al tichasi dami ve'al yehi mekom lezakati Eretz al Altihasidamiyahu <laughs> So I came alone, me na adama, the voice of our brothers and sisters' bloods cry out from the. And now we recite the Kelmole, the memorial prayer. Again, thank you to everyone who has stayed with us. This was not a professionally done memorial. It was a memorial that came from the heart and soul. And I thank the participants and thank everyone. If Rev. Stephen Exler happens to be on, and if he's able to recite the Kelmole, it will be so appreciated otherwise. Is Rev. Stephen on? He's not on. Rev. Stephen? Rev. Stephen's not on, so I think it's going to be okay. Robbie. <laughs> Shochen Bamroim Hamsei Menucha Nichona Tacha Kanfei Ashkina Vimalo Kidoshim Utahorim Kizowa Harakia Masirim Et Nishmot Elu meachenu vachyotenu Shenehergu biirua bipsatsat amia Vigane den tehe menuchatam Lachen balarachami Yasidei besetei kenafav liolami Vitzro vitzro rachayim et nishmatam Adonai hu nachalatam Yonuchu bishalo amishkabam May the benevolent, loving God remember the souls of our brothers and sisters who were brutally murdered in the Yamiya attack. We pray that they rest comfortably in Eden, that God be with them that God protect them, and that in their name, we respond to hatred with love. We respond to awful deeds with acts of kindness.
kindness. We respond to darkness with light. As the Rebbe once said, Sat meha'or doche harbe mena A little bit of light pushes away the, dark, their, the darkness. God bless their nishamot. God bless you all. Stay safe. Be well. Blessings and love. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for participating.